Um, I will record the webinar that way. If anybody misses some of it or didn't have, you know, got distracted or had something come up, uh, I can just send you the recording if you'd like. So today we're going to talk about Medicare lead and marketing strategies. We're going to go over most of the ones we come across. Um, I got these together just because I talk to a lot of agents um, and we work with a lot of agents. So we get ideas of how they market and what they do. I, I myself sold a number of Medicare plans for years. And um, so I use just about all of these strategies at one point or another as well. So we'll go through them. So we'll talk about working your existing book and clients, um, working with other agencies or agents' books, seminars, uh, mailers, uh, you know, personalized mailers, uh, power or predictive dialers, whatever term you want to use, uh, retail, community events, um, online leads, and then group, which is getting cut off there at the bottom, but that says group, trust me. And, uh, and obviously retail has been uh, pretty popular lately, especially with the new announcement with Aetna working with um, Target stores. I think that should be good, and they're putting a lot of resources into it as well. So we'll hit on all of those. Um, and retail, like I said, should be a pretty hot one this year, um, given that also Aetna is allowing people to go into stores immediately um, for that. And they're, they're pumping um, resources into it as well. So that should be a good program. Okay, so to get started, about lead strategies and marketing strategies, even though people resist it, existing clients in books are always the easiest way, always. Um, I'll say it twice. If you have access to a book in another line of business, that is the easiest way to go. All of these other lead strat strategies will work, but they're harder. Um, so what I'm saying is if you've got a book of health insurance clients, if you've got a book of final expense clients, you've got a book of P&C, cross-selling them Medicare is easier than any, other, any of these other strategies. Um, Medicare cross-sells super easy. These people are going to want help with Medicare. So it is not a burden when they hear from you uh, regarding Medicare, unlike if you're trying to cross-sell a different product. Even you know, final expense, annuities, life insurance, those things are much harder. Medicare is much easier. So if you've got an existing book that's gold, um, and you should not ignore it. Uh, but strangely enough, it is. A lot of times people just are, are like, well, I want to get new clients, and um, it just doesn't make sense. But we'll, we'll get into that. Again, the strategies I'm going to lay out below, they work. Uh, they don't work for everybody. Uh, and they got to be a match with how you like to market. And none of them are layups. If they were layups, um, then everybody would just do the easy one. The other thing I'll say about these is they take a lot of preparation. Some of them take a ton of preparation to make them work really well. If enough preparation goes in, they'll work. Um, but, you know, and then others that I'm going to talk about don't take quite as much. You need to prepare on all of them, but some take a lot more know-how in doing than others. All right, so touching on the existing book, working your own book, uh, again, it's the easiest product to cross-sell. And basically, anybody that you've sold anything to, I don't care what line of business it is, when they are within four months of turning 65, they should go in your calendar to call them. And I say four months because three is too late. They might do something already. But four months before, you give them a call, you're going to say, look, uh, you know, I helped you out with such and such. Maybe it was health insurance, whatever it may be. So you're turning 65 in four or five months, depending on when you call them. I can help you get set up on Medicare A and B. Uh, you don't have to pay me anything for this service. I have access to it, multiple companies. And I can help you shop this out and figure out what plan works best for you. It's that easy. Um, somebody's going to work with these people on Medicare. It might as well be you. Medicare is not an emotional sale. It's an education. So it's not like selling final expense or selling life products. It's about knowing what, you, what you're talking about and being able to relay, relay that information in a very concise and simple manner to your client or your prospect to help them make the best decision they can when it comes to Medicare and help them understand. So it's purely an education because they got to do something. All right, so I spoke over my slide like I always seem to do. Um, but regardless, um, books, any, any book of business you have, anybody you worked with in the past in any capacity, put them in your calendar four months prior. At one point, I had people in my calendar up to three or four years ahead, and I had notices in there that they were turning 65 in four months. If you are relying on maybe you write a husband for Medicare and you think the spouse is going to call you when she turns 65, there's a good chance they won't. Um, so you you take it upon yourself. They want the help. They want the information. Also should call any client 65 and older. Um, so maybe you've got a P&C book. Maybe you've got a health insurance book. You're a financial planner or an RIA, whatever it may be. Call these people 65 and older. Tell them you just want to do a review. Um, you know, if you, if you want to fill out over the phone and you've determined they've got something that's a 
good fit, well, then talk to them during open enrollment because the plans are going to change if they have an Advantage plan. If they've got supplements, you can almost always find something better for them. I usually used to make follow-up with mail, um, introducing my services. Like, So if I had an existing book I hadn't touched on with Medicare, I'd tell them I'm doing Medicare now. But I wouldn't rely on mail. The phone is the, most, is the best thing with existing clients, but following up with some mail or an email certainly works. Um, you can send emails. Um, believe it or not, there's a rule change. You can actually email cold. You can email prospects. They don't even have to have been your client. Um, you now can send emails prospecting to anybody. Obviously, you've got to follow the rules regarding opt-outs and things such as that. But Medicare, CMS, does no longer, they no longer have a rule saying you can't cold email about Advantage and Part D. You always could email about supplements, but they took the restrictions off for Advantage and Part D now as well. Again, they're going to work with somebody, people 65 and older, you might as well have it be you. Um, so existing books and clients, again, 65 and older, um, if they have the best plan, so if you meet, they're 65 and older, you meet with them, they have the best plan, book an appointment for open enrollment. Say to them, look, you're in good shape. These plans are subject to change and have rate increases. Let's have a meeting in, or talk at least in October or November. Referral gifts are really important. I'll tell a quick story here for a minute. Um, I um, never did referral gifts, didn't think they really would mean anything. A few years ago, I had somebody talk to me about how successful they were with them. So I personally, on my existing book, because I don't really prospect for new clients anymore, on my existing book, I started giving out referral gifts when I get a referral. Um, they get a card every time. They get a little gift um, within the limits, you know, less than $15. But whatever, whenever I get a referral, I give them that gift. Um, whether I close the sale or not, doesn't matter. They get it. My referrals have quadrupled. I mean, I get so many more referrals now as a result just because of the acknowledgement. Um, I get people. I never used to get pe multiple referrals from the same person. I do all the time now. So referral gifts really important. And again, you know, an existing book is by far the easiest way to put is to put you know new business on the books for you. So you have some agencies out there that don't want to bother with Medicare. You might not believe that, but it's true. You have health agencies, a lot of registered investment advisory firms, IARs, RIAs, um, broker-dealers, PNC agencies a lot. A lot of times they're just doing their business and they don't know Medicare or they don't want to know it or they've just not thought about it much. Um, they're leaving a ton of money on the table, of course. Well, the idea there would be to, to meet them, talk to these people, find them, and tell them you can do it for them. Um, let them know that you know you only do Medicare. That's and even if you do other things other than Medicare, that's all you'll do for them is simply Medicare. Um, and by just doing Medicare, it will you know help their clients and it'll keep their clients from going somewhere else to somebody else for Medicare who might try to then steal them for PNC or health or whatever it may be. I mean, there's a lot of financial planning firms and RIAs now that do Medicare seminars just to get a hold of these people and capture assets. So tell them you'll do Medicare for them. We'll take, we won't take any of their business. You need to pay them a referral fee. I'd strongly recommend that. Um, and if you're going to tell them you're paying them a referral fee, make sure you pay it. Get a lot of people saying, well, what about the rules? Well, the rules are pertaining to when you pay a referral fee to a client or a Medicare prospect, not another broker or another insurance agent. You can set a, a percentage you want to pay them and you can pay it. But if you tell them you're going to pay it, make sure you do. I think that's, you know, 80% of agents I talk to, um, you know, somebody has said to them, well, yeah, I'll give you a referral fee um, when I write business, and they just never give it to them. Um, you know, and they either have to ask for it or they just don't want to bother to ask. But um, that's a great way to go. Now, I said in the bottom, what if they want to write business or have an employee they want uh, to write business? Well, talk to us then about getting them set up to write, write it on their own in a potential GA contract for yourself. So if you find a, a big agency and they want to handle the Medicare themselves, great. We'll find somebody for them or they can find somebody. We'll get them certified, trained, plug them into the lead program if need be, but they can probably work their existing book and get them set up. And then we'll talk to you about what's needed to, to work towards a GA level. If you have questions about that concept, please uh, you know feel free to call me or email me. Seminars are easiest during AEP and OEP. The reason I say that is because you need people in the seats. And during AEP and OEP, that's when the carriers, most namely uh, United um, and Aetna, um, but that's when they will put use their, their, their turnkey programs for seminars and they will 
do the recruiting for you. They'll send out the mail. They'll they'll do the the, the newspaper ads. They'll send the flyers out to get people to a seminar that you run for them. If you want to do seminars for a carrier, you got to talk to your broker manager. Um, you know they'll they'll provide all materials for the meetings. They'll they'll do everything. They'll help you out with everything you need. The one thing you have to do though is you got to find the venue. <clears throat> your office is not a good option if you have an office. People don't like usually coming to insurance offices for seminars. Restaurants, diners, libraries, other public places are usually better. Um, when you do these seminars, the carriers are usually going to want you to have a separate room or at least something you can kind of separate out. So this gets tricky sometimes at places like Panera, which are good locations, a lot of people, and they like going there. Uh, but Panera won't really let you isolate an area, which makes it tough. So you got to find somewhere that will. You can also help increase your attendance by not only relying on the carriers to get people to your seminars, but you can drop your own mail. Uh, leave flyers at the location with multiple dates, like the carriers have approved flyers, and you can say, you know, it can say your name, it can say you're doing Medicare seminars, and it can say the next three dates and locations of the seminar, and you can leave flyers there. Other locations like senior centers, um, uh, companies, some some businesses, uh, or social groups work well too. If you're going to do seminars, first of all, your your broker manager, the carrier broker manager, has to trust you. They have to feel confident in you. And you'll want to start those conversations with them in May or June. If you don't know who your broker manager is for United or Aetna, or in some places, Humana or Blue Cross Blue Shield, call our office. We'll find it for you. Or call Pinnacle. They'll find out who it is for you. Um, but you definitely got to build some rapport and start a relationship there before they're just going to toss you into a store. Uh, I was going to hit one more thing. One more thing I was going to talk about on seminars while well, I wait till I hit the retail part. Okay, so generic mail. <clears throat> so a lot of people like to work mail reply cards, and there's a lot of companies for it. I mentioned a few here. They're not necessarily the, not necessarily the best ones, but they're some of the, the known ones. What they do is with generic mail, they'll target a population, and they'll drop per thousand. That's how you pay for them, per thousand mailed. And you'll drop mail to people maybe turning 65 or maybe people 65 plus if you want to try to go after supplements you got to figure out who you're targeting. So, for example, if you're going to have mail dropped to people turning 65, uh, what area and uh, how far ahead are you having it dropped? So my point is if these companies are dropping 1,000 pieces, you need to rely on a decent return. And I can tell you right now, if you're going to drop per 1,000 and you're going to drop mail to people turning 65 in the next three months, be ready for a half a percent return. So you're going to pay 550 bucks and get about five responders. If you're dropping mail to T65s, you got to mail them six months or more out, at least six months. I'd recommend even going out nine to 12. That way they're not getting as much mail. They're not getting, you know, bludgeoned yet by mail uh, for Medicare. You can get them early and you'll get a much better response rate. If you're going to drop mail per thousand to people 65 or older, we'll have a reason for it. Like, for example, in New York, right now, Empire Blue Cross Blue Shield supplements have silver sneakers and a better rate than AARP supplements. Okay, so drop mail, have the company you work with, one of those at the top I mentioned, Target Leads, Assured Direct Mail, Main Street Power Mail, Arm, uh, RGI. Have them drop mail for people 66 plus, a certain area, you can pick the age, the income. Have them drop mail and have a pitch supplements. And then when you get that reply card, you can call it and you can talk to them about the fact that Empire has the same plan for less money. But you got to have a strategy when you go for it. So working mail is not easy. Um, when you get that mail reply card, just because they sent it back, it doesn't mean they're going to say, yeah, yeah, Ed, come on over. Um, great, thanks. Um, you got to be good on the phone because you got to get them on the phone, first of all, and you got you got to be able to set an appointment. And you got to have a reason to set it. If you're not good on the phone, I wouldn't recommend mailers. Really probably makes a, a good idea to have a good CRM. For those who don't know, that's contact uh, relationship management software, um, client relationship management software. It's just, it keeps all the names of the people you've talked to in a system online. Or you can use an old school spreadsheet, but, you know, CRM is better. Um, and you got to be diligent with your follow-up, meaning you call them and call them and call them until you get a hold of them and get an answer. Um, the people that are best with mail responders are the people that are, are simply just persistent and never forget about them and keep calling them and are good on, on the phone. Uh, if you want, we have a really unique program, so if you don't want to mail per thousand and hope you get a good reply, 
you know, percentage because it's kind of a crapshoot. Um, we have a program where you can actually buy the, just the mail reply card at a, a fixed price. So $16 a piece for 66, 65 plus or $18 each for T65s. They're exclusive. They're not shared. Um, you can do that through a company called RGI. The only way you can access that is through Pinnacle Financial Services. The reason is, is Pinnacle pig, piggybacks these orders. Our, RGI usually requires a massive order, you know, 1,000 leads. But through Pinnacle, you can do a minimum of 20, and you can get them for these set prices. So that's a pretty handy program, um, obviously, through Pinnacle if you do this. Obviously, you got to have your contracts with us in Pinnacle to utilize that service, but um, certainly you can do so. And that, along with our free lead program, you, know, you get up, on our free lead program, you get up to $500 a month of, you know, lead reimbursement. Um, you know, obviously, you can you can buy mail responders at no cost to yourself. Personalized mailers, I don't see this as much, but um, when I do see it, it's usually a very long-term strategy that can work really well in a given market. So, personalized just simply means they personalize that mailer to you. Um, so instead of it being a generic mailer, because when you mail out per thousand or when you buy from RGI, it's just a generic reply card. It's nothing to do with you. It's just they responded saying they wanted information. Personalized has your maybe your logo, your name, um, specific to you, your agency or yourself. Um, and the companies will make these for you. What you got to do is if you're going to do personalized mailers, you want to work on a specific area and just keep working it. Keep mailing it over and over a specific area that's local to you. You can build yourself a very strong local presence that way. Doing personalized mailers um, certainly can build a strong local presence. Uh, doing that, I'd suggest it. Um, it's best to work uh, T65 leads with this strategy, uh, I think. Because, <clears throat> you know, you can mail them up ahead of time and they can get familiar with you'll get familiar with your agency and that you're in the area. Um, your returns will certainly be hurt by personalized mailers, so it's going to hurt your return. Um, but you can build, you know, you won't get as much of a return because it's personalized, but you can build a brand and an awareness as a local expert over time. So you can definitely build over time in that way, so that, that works. All right, power dialers. <clears throat> Let me take a drink of water here. Okay, a power dialer is not a robo dialer. Um, they're starting to crack down now on robo dialers. They've always been illegal, but well, for a long time anyway. Robo dialers, when it's just a pre recorded message, power dialer or predictive dialer is different. That just means you're uploading a, a, a list of phone numbers, DNC compliant, and it helps you, it, it calls them for you instead of you dialing. It'll call through the, through the computer and put you on the phone with live people greatly increase the number of people you can talk to. I mean, you can talk to 50 live people an hour using a power dialer. So somebody turning 65 campaigns or, you know, calling uh, leads, I mean, this really works great. Even if you have mail responders, you can upload them into your dialer or just T65 lists. We have a really good price on power dialers through salesdialers.com. Really good price. Uh, you can pay 59 to 109 a month, depending on what you want. One to three line dialers. You can get them with data, data or not. Um, Meaning, if you buy the $59 or $69 one-line dialer with data, you get the dialer, uh, and you can run your own lists, too. Or if you just want to get the dialer and not the data, we can run the list for you. We don't charge for it. So either way. But if you're interested in this um, or you want to know more about just what a power dialer is and how it works, go to salesdialers.com forward slash crow. So www.salesdialers.com forward slash crow. And you'll see that's our sponsored site for it. So great pricing. Sales di uh, power dialer will greatly increase the number of people you talk to. And all you do is upload any call list, whether it's a list of leads you have, whether it's uh, you're running a list. It's just you put in an Excel file, you upload it into your dialer, and off you go. They're easy to use. The other thing people will do in dialers is they'll run lists. They'll use their leads, maybe get them in an Excel format and use their old phone numbers. Or they'll buy aged leads. There's a whole concept with that, but you can go to like age lead store and buy leads for people that were, had, they were, they were health insurance leads, um, people that were back two years ago, 63, or a year ago, 64. You can buy those leads now for a couple pennies a piece. Um, that gets you around the DNC problem because when you run regular lists, you got DNC issues with it. If you buy aged leads, though, you can, you know, build up a big inventory of leads to call. And again, buy health leads that two years, you know, 
that are a year old for people that were 64 at the time. So something worth looking into. An aged lead store, for example, is a good a good one for that. All right, using a power dialer, it doesn't get you around the rules. Um, you can't cold call Advantage or Part D. I mean, you're going to use a power dialer, you're going to call either, you know, if you're going to call on mail repliers through your power dialer, that's fine, that's legal. But if you're going to call lists, cold call lists, you can't call Advantage or Part D, you can only call supplements. Uh, you should get DNC compliant lists. We, we run DNC compliant lists, or if you get the power dialer with data, you can run it DNC compliant. Aged leads get around the DNC list, again, because those people signed a form saying you can call them, signed a lead card. You've got to have a good script, and it's got to be shortened to the point if you're going to do this, and you got to have a strategy of what you're trying to do, whether it be 66 plus or T65. Um, it just depends. I mean, T65, a lot of times, will keep it really simple and say you're, you know, you're turning 65 and nine months, I can show you how to get on Medicare A and B. I'd like to send you some help from, helpful information and they start they start a rapport that way and a connection. And they stay in touch with them until they get close enough where they can enroll them. Or 66 plus, you can call again. If you've got a supplement that has a great great price in your state uh, and it's suddenly you know, a company that suddenly came out with a really good price, call away um, and have a script for that. Hey, uh, you know, such and such company now has a plan G at a lower rate than everybody else. Uh, we can save you money and give you the same benefits. That kind of idea. All right, I mentioned on power dialers. I said, are you going to do it yourself or hire a telemarketer? Some people will get power dialer accounts, and then they'll have a telemarketer do it. I mean, if you can get somebody in-house or do it yourself, that's best. Obviously, some people don't want to spend that time commitment. They want to um, try other ways. So maybe they'll get an in-house person, teach them the script, and have them use the power dialer. Or they'll go to a website like onlinejobs.ph um, where you can get a, an overseas telemarketer uh, for four to five bucks an hour. That's a lot of trial and error finding a good one. Uh, in my opinion, it's best to have an in-house in -house person that you just pay hourly with maybe some kind of bonus and, uh, and have them dial. I haven't had the best experience with outside telemarketing firms. It doesn't mean that they aren't out there or there aren't good ones. Just my experience has been lukewarm at best. But again, if you have a good good firm that you want to use, go for it. Um, but I think in-house is the best. Um, you got to have a good CRM, so you got to have a good uh, customer uh, contact management system because um, you got to be able to track all this stuff. Are uh, you really doing? You got to be able to do follow-ups, and it's hard to do it on just like a spreadsheet. Okay, retail is going to be a hot topic this year. Um, there's a lot of retail locations. You've got Walmart, CVS, Walgreens, Targets. Uh, Aetna is now really pushing. Um, doing target locations, uh, and with some of these retail locations, you can get in right away. Some of them are during AEP or OEP only, like Walmart. But Walgreens, which is through United Healthcare or Target through Aetna, um, you can you can get into those now. Um, but you got to bid on a store right away. The bidding process already started. I sent out an email about a week ago, maybe two weeks ago, um, regarding stores that are available for various retail locations. But if you're interested in that, send me an email or call because uh, finding a good store can be huge. Um, but you got to bid on them in April or May. Location at the store is key. Um, depending on your store manager, location can be uh, a little tricky, but if you can get a good spot up front, it really works. Relationship with the pharmacy and store employees are great. There can be a lot of downtime at retail locations because basically you're at a booth sitting there. Um, but people that are there 20 hours or more consistently get a relationship with the pharmacist, get a relationship with the people at the store, they will do well. I mean, they do. I've seen many, many examples of it. You can be really successful. It's just hard sometimes when you're during a slow time to keep the right mindset um, that, you know, you got to put in your time. I think this is really a great opportunity for agents that don't have large Medicare books. Somebody saddled with a huge book, this is tough. But if you don't have a huge book or if you're newer, Retail makes a lot of sense. It really does. One more thing regarding retail I just wanted to say is Aetna now is putting um, money into the targets, not only by having a retail location and working with the stores, but they're doing things to drive attendance there too, to drive people there for Medicare information with mailers, with emails, with social media. So Aetna seems to be really putting a committed effort into their target locations in retail. And again, if you can get a store, they're available now to be in there. Community events, there's a ton of types of community events. There's lots of options. 
senior centers, community centers, food pantries. Yeah, believe it or not, food pantries, social services offices, the social service office, uh, doctor's offices. Um, they can all be great places, um, a good source of year-round enrollments. I'll give you some examples. Food pantries, if you know somebody at a food pantry and you have an in, if they'll let you set up a table there, you can. that can be a tremendous opportunity for dual sales. I mean, it really can. Um, social services or social security offices, um, you know, I know of some brokers who have their offices in the same building across the hall from the social services office, social security office, I should say. Um, I mean, you know, great opportunity. Some doctor's offices, believe it or not, are good spots. If you can get in there um, or even have them help you drive attendance for seminars, which we could talk about later, um, it can be great opportunities. But community events can work great. You should talk to your broker manager about that or call our office regarding it. And again, I've, I've seen um, the food pantry thing. I, I know some brokers that um, they have, I think they're in at five different food pantries and they write hundreds of apps every year from them. So it can be a great source. Online leads, okay, online leads are their own unique thing. Um, the, the way this works is you buy an online lead and you work that lead. All right, so sh what's happening is the senior's going online the prospect, so to speak. They're trying to get a quote. They think they're going to get a quote, but they don't read the fine print. And at the bottom, it says, thanks, an agent will contact you, or it says up to seven, actually, usually, will contact you. And those companies then sell you that lead. Uh, and when that online lead comes in, it comes in, you know, somebody's looking for Medicare, they have questions, it gives you an opportunity to call them to get a sale. Shared leads are better than exclusive. Now, shared leads are terrible. Uh, for one reason. I mean, they're good and bad. The terrible part is a shared lead means when that person submits that information, that online lead, you get four or five or six other brokers are going to get it at the same time. So that person's going to get called by five or six people at once. That's where kind of the difference is, is how good you are at working online leads. Now, exclusive leads sound great. Okay, it's an online lead and only I'm getting it. They just don't work for some reason. The price is too high. The close ratio is not that much better. Um, and usually they're not exclusive anyway. So go with share. Trust me on that one. You got to have a CRM, um, contact relationship, relationship management software. You need an auto dialer, a power dialer. Must have emails with applications and instructions ready to go. Um, most online leads don't want to meet with you. They're going to want to do over the phone usually. I can close cases with the online enrollment. You can fax, email, or mail, and you don't need to be face-to-face. -face. Um, you do, are required to get a scope now, so if you're going to fax or email or mail them applications, I wouldn't be really quick to mail them one unless they're serious, but if you're going to fax or email, uh, you want to include a scope with that. If you're using our Connect for Medicare online enrollment system, it includes the scope. Uh, Connect for Medicare is going to be crucial um, to work on online leads, but I think I'm going to talk about that in a minute. So if you're going to work on online leads, you got to track them. you got to keep track of every one of them. You're going to get a lot of bad leads, uh, a lot. So what you want to do is track them, and most of the companies will let you send in X amount per month and get refunded, you know, get a credit for them. Um, so you want to get those credits, because if you're not, you're just going to get a lot of junk leads that you're just not getting credited for. You got to contact them immediately. So if you're working an online lead, you got to contact that thing immediately. I mean, the second it comes in, because somebody else is going to have that lead immediately coming to their auto dialer, and it's going to be dialing them like that. So you got to be really quick. Got to be diligent with all of them with follow up, follow up and consistency are maybe the most important thing in speed of getting to the person. Um, one strategy I think that works really well for people is to leave your leads turned on during the weekends and late in the data that is late in the day. That also helps because a lot of brokers will have their leads set to come in during business hours. So if you have your leads set in set to come in during weekends, other brokers might not be working and might not be calling. So you're, you might you know, only might be you or one other person calling that lead. Huge advantage. And you need a script that's quick and to the point. You can't mess around with an online lead. You got to explain to them. You can help them find the right plan. You work with all the carriers. You don't charge them anything. Get right to the point. Let them know what you're there to do. How you're going to help them. I was going to say one more thing regarding the online lead, but I think I lost my. Oh, I was going to mention. So our Connect for Medicare has made this working online leads a lot easier. 
Connect for Medicare, if you're not familiar, that's if you work with us or Pinnacle, um, Connect for Medicare allows you to go online and enroll people in Advantage Supplement and Part D online, no wet signature needed, needed and the scopes included. And it's one site you can use to enroll with all the carriers. So Connect for Medicare has made a huge difference when it comes to working online leads for us. Because you no longer have to mail, fax, or scan applications to people. You can just knock it out through email. And for those of you saying, well, they probably don't have email, they do. Anybody who's doing an online lead, they were on a computer. That's how they submitted this thing in the first place. And they are usually almost always computer savvy, and they will have email. Group strategies, there's a couple group strategies you can use. Um, if you know a group, an employer, um, basically anybody turning 65, that employer, once they turn 65, has them go on Medicare, um, have them send them to you. Uh, the HR people don't really want to have time to babysit and handhold people through you know, the process of getting on Medicare. So if you find a good company, then they trust you and they know that you can, you know, will give good advice, that you work with Advantage and Supplement and all the carriers. It's a great opportunity. Um, you know, you can say to them, listen, when this person turns 65, they got questions about Medicare, have them call me. Get a lot of brokers that write a lot of business that way, and uh, definitely a good way to go. But you got to build that relationship in the first place, obviously. The more involved, but really can be the, maybe the most effective strategy out of any of these, is groups with active employees 65 and older, um, bigger groups. Um, that have active employees 65 and older that are on the group health plan. Keep in mind, these groups can't force them off the group health plan, but they can offer a package that entices them to come off. Because if they force them off, it's age discrimination. But what's happening is when somebody's on an under 65 group health plan, but they're over 65 and working, it's costing the group a fortune. It's probably costing them a lot too. So you can make a package that entices them to come off, working with the employer. And that package can say, hey, uh, you know, uh, Joe, uh, now that you're 65, you can certainly stay on the group plan, but if you'd like, if you want to go on Medicare, we'll pay your Part B premium, we'll pay your Medicare supplement, and your Part D premium. So basically, you'll have a plan that will cost you nothing. Maybe a plan G, so you'll basically be covered in full with the drug plan, you'll have no premium, and your Part B will be paid. It's probably going to be a big step up in coverage for Joe, and it's going to save, it maybe it's going to probably most definitely save him money, and it's going to certainly still save the company a lot of money. If you can find a company that has actives like that, a big population, that can be a massive source of enrollments. Um, you get people that write individuals, individuals that write seven, 800 supplements a year using a strategy like this because they find a couple big, good companies um, with a lot of employees. So that can work really well. All right, I kind of just set everything that elicits here on the slide. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention is if you're going to do this with a company, make sure they have a form that the employee signs off on saying that I'm voluntarily coming off the group plan to take this Medicare package being offered. Because if you don't have them sign off on it, if they come back later on and say, hey, they just told me I had to come off, that's age discrimination. So you want something in writing. All right, I guess that's it. I went through everything. It's kind of quick, but um, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to talk to you more specifically or you can email more specifically about any of these strategies. Again, I've I've used them all myself um, to, to one extent or another, and I've certainly talked to a lot of agents that have used them successfully. Having said that, they're not for everybody, certainly. Um, you know, well, one strategy might work well for somebody, the other one won't work at all. Um, but regardless, if you have questions, let's talk about it. Um, feel free to call me at the office, as you see my numbers there, or uh, my email, which is listed there. Appreciate you all coming on and listening today, and I uh, hope you have a great day. Thank you.